In today's project diary, I will show you how to grow petunias from seed. Hi guys and welcome to Project Diaries. Now a lot of subscribers have started to complain I'm not making growing videos a lot. Uh, and this is basically down to the weather. This is springtime and we're supposed to be getting lots of sun and the temperature is supposed to allow seeds to germinate really quickly. But as you can see I've still got my hoodie on and it's freezing. We had another spout of snow last week and it's just nothing's germinating. So what I'm going to do is go back into the archives and try to rejuvenate some videos that I was unable to finish last year due to computer problems. So in today's video I'm going to teach you how to grow petunias from seed and I'm going to put these into containers and it's one of Grandad's favourite flowers. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and here's how to do it. So I'm going to be using some of the tools I've made from recycled plastic bottles. If you haven't seen that video, the link is on the screen now. So I'm going to use these really great seed trays that I've been given and I'm using multi-purpose compost. Now there are going to be lots of gardeners out there that say you need certain compost for certain seedlings and, and seed types and varieties. But in my personal experience, all I've used is the cheapest multi-purpose compost and I've had great results. You just want to make sure the soil and the container is really well draining. And if you can, get a peat-free compost because this will help the environment. Using dirt from the garden isn't advisable for growing any seedlings. You really want these to have the best start in life by using a multi-purpose compost. If you've seen my live video, you know I take my time when it comes to seedlings. So here's the link if you want to see that. And I'm just going to speed the video up now. So now the soil is level and all the big chunks have been taken out. I'm just going to use my homemade seed tray and sprinkle out the seeds. Now as you can see, petunia seeds are absolutely tiny. So it's a good idea to sprinkle these on a clear tray or a white tray like this just so you can see how many seeds are there. Then what you want to do is gently pick up a couple of seeds between 3 and 5 and lightly sprinkle them in the pod. Now petunias are notoriously slow germinators but you can start these anything up to 6 weeks before your last frost date indoors or just make sure you get a nice spring warmth before you start these in any greenhouse. Now petunias are stunning for a burst of colour in any part of the garden that gets partial or lots of full sun but I will go through lots of varieties and colours later on in the video. Then just simply sprinkle a few seeds in each pod until the tray is full. Now petunia seeds need sunlight to germinate so you don't want to bury these or cover them in soil in any way. Once you're happy with the results you just need to water them in. Now as I've made this watering can I've done the finest holes that I can in the top this will allow the water to be spread lightly and evenly in order not to dislodge any of the seeds. If you haven't made one of these already, it's a good idea to water these from the base if you don't have a fine nozzle on your watering device. Then just make sure the soil remains moist, not too dry or too wet. Now petunia seeds should germinate between 5 and 15 days if you have the right temperatures, but it's been so cold lately they're just not doing anything after 2 weeks. So I'm just going to try and keep these as warm as possible, be patient and not give up. After three weeks you can see these really tiny and delicate seedlings pushing through. They're absolutely adorable. Now here they are after eight weeks. Now again we've had such cold weather these should be way more advanced by now. The slow temperatures or the cooler temperatures will slow the growth of these quite considerably. Now I lost some of this footage when my last hard drive packed up so basically all I've done is transferred each individual seedling into its own pot. But I've shown you how to do this on lots of other videos so hopefully that doesn't matter. Hopefully when you try this at home you'll have more luck and by now they should be ready to transplant into hanging baskets or borders. So to make up for the lost footage I'm going to show you so many beautiful varieties that I personally love. Now instead of naming the hundreds and hundreds of varieties that are available and many different colours, I'm just going to show you on the screen some of the names and varieties that I like. And as usual, I'll leave you some handy Amazon links in the description box below if you want to get hold of any of these seeds online. As usual, I don't sell any of these seeds, I'm just doing this to help you out. Now out of the hundreds of varieties you can get, there's only four main types. These are milliflora, grandiflora and multiflora, as well as the spreading wave. Grandiflora are one of the oldest varieties produced in the 1950s. These can grow up to 5 inches and boast stunning blooms, but they can start to look tired around midsummer and they don't like high humidities. Milliflora varieties are great for hanging baskets and containers because they produce a lot smaller flower around 1 inch and their stems can grow around 5 inches to 8 inches. They're also a very low maintenance variety and don't need deadheading throughout the summer. The multiflora variety are a lot smaller plant but they do produce a lot more flowers. 
These are ideal for borders and ground cover. The stems are really strong compared to others and really don't mind a windy climate. Also the blooms are really durable in rainy seasons so they're perfectly good for England. The final variety are the spreading or wave petunias. These are fairly new to the petunia family and they produce a larger bloom around 2 inches and the stems can grow for anything between 2 and 4 feet. These look great cascading from hanging baskets or really good for ground cover. These are a great variety for beginners because they can tolerate more heat and they don't mind a little drought. They also don't require any deadheading. So they're extremely low maintenance and they produce loads and loads of flowers. These are just some of the examples that I grew from seed last year and as you can see they are just stunning in colour. Now petunias can be perennials in warmer climates but in England we tend to grow them as annuals. They can also self seed and come back every year but I will show you how to collect these seeds in another video so don't forget to subscribe if the link isn't active on the screen right now. So here you go, some beautiful petunia flowers grown from seed. Just wondering if you can see that. Now these are starting to wilt, uh, mainly because it's so hot in the shed today and I haven't watered these uh, for a couple of days, mainly because I'm going to transplant these into hanging baskets, but I'll show you how to do that in another video. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to grow petunias from seed. Now there's no way of determining what colour these are going to be um, when you're growing them from seed. Um, but they all seem to be a, a different varieties of sort of pinks and purples. And then there's m so, so many different beautiful colours you can get. And some that are even sort of a velvety uh, texture on the flowers once you touch them. But um, these are slowly becoming one of my favourite hanging basket flowers. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see that video. And I'll see you again next time. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.